Timberborn, an outstanding colony builder that at first did not seem uh, that exciting to me. I get a lot of emails in my email inbox about colony builders, having done a lot of RimWorld on my channel. And it, at, at first glance, it looks like just an animal colony sim, but it is actually rather good. Uh, I had the, the chance this morning to try it out for about only 42 minutes, but it, you hardly even need a tutorial of this game because it's very well designed. Um, I, I've made my way through the basics, and I know how to play. We're going to be replaying through the tutorial here a little bit, but um, we're, I mean, we're going to give it an honest try. I'm going to go through a couple of the fundamentals. We've got no nothing to do in range. We've got to start designating some trees. Uh, I'm assuming that if you've seen this, you've probably seen a lot of colony games, you know. You gotta cut down trees, gather resources, and get started on your base. Uh, we're raising an army of beavers to combat what? What is our enemy in the game? Well, the apoc- I'm gonna just sum up a lot of really quirky backstory that I've found that I like about this game. I mean, at first glance, it's just like animals in a colony builder, but no, there's been an apocalypse, which is why there's all of these city ruins and things like that, at least as far as I gather. And every few days, a drought will come, and this beautiful cellular automata mechanic happens in which the river dries up, and all of the land turns into this just giant pile of garbage. So pretty much we're saving up water until that time, and we need to gather resources and fend for our beavers until that happens. An oddly charming game with really good writing. I mean, even look at the little bits of fluff. There's slight, there's John Denver references in it. It's absolutely outstanding writing. So I'm going to quickly go through a lot of the tutorial that I've already done. Um, but just explain a little bit so that if it's your first time trying it, you at least get that much out of it. Uh, I still don't really know what I'm doing, so things won't be perfectly optimized. Um, but probably a lot of folks who are watching this have seen the game a bit. Um, I'm trying to think of people who have done it. The main one I saw was uh, a lot of real civil engineer videos I was getting recommended, which was just fantastic. I was like, I'm surprised not more people have done this. And then my friend uh, Cody, I'm Kibitz, uh, did it. Which, he's just done a lot of, like, uh, colony builder sim games. And I don't know, it just kind of gets me back into, uh, what I most enjoy about, uh, YouTubing. It's just, just trying out new games, which I, I feel like I've done a lot of the same. So, it's nice to be trying out more stuff, so I'll be doing more like this on the stream lately. Um, I'm gonna go ahead in one second. We are streaming this, um, I just had notifications turned off for a second. There we go. So, i gonna speed up time a little bit. Dang Engine Dave, I just want to screw this up again. There we go. All right, so now we've got water pumping, we've got trees being cut down, and we've got our beavers employed. Uh, they have this kind of like sim lees. I'll just be quiet for a second so it doesn't... Like, it kind of reminded me of... You remember when EA uh, had the sims? And correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I read a news story when I was younger that... I mean, much younger, that the reason why the sims talk the way they do in the game is because they couldn't afford audio or something like that when they were developing the sims i don't know if that's entirely true but or i mean i have no idea but it, it's a it's a funny backstory is that true that that's the reason why sims speak in similes anyway a really like kind of iconic feature of that game is just the way that the sims talk and, I don't know, reminded me of that, but just a, a lot of things that we're not really seeing in AAA gaming as much anymore. And just kind of like charmingly, nostalgically being implemented by indie developers. Um, Simlish was created, supposedly, here's a quote. Um, Kid Borgo, thank you for this. Because the game needed dialogue, but thought that using real-life languages such as English would cause the dialogue to be repetitive and would be expensive translating. Exactly, yeah, because you don't want to pay for entire, like, swaths of voice actors when you can just create these ridiculous sounds. I mean, remember, too. This was during a different time when we didn't have Unity for game development and all of that kind of stuff. And wowzers, hey, everything bagel. Thanks very much for the ten gift subs. God bless. Thank you, my friend. Much appreciated. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, 
I, I find myself kind of nostalgically going back to games that I enjoyed as a kid when big studios today were smaller. Uh, but it'll be really interesting to see what happens with the indie boon. You know, we had it like 10 years ago start with stuff like Steam, Greenlight. But now indie studios, we're starting to see them be committed to singular projects. One wonders if they'll grow and start to become more like the big studios of yesterday. But uh, I don't know, this is kind of like a bigger debate around it. Let's focus on Timberborn, but it, it's it's one of the things that makes me most excited to play this game. Um, okay, so what is our central conflict? We've got the Gatherer flag going up. Are they actually working on this? They are. Uh, our beavers are pretty good at dividing their work throughout the day. I haven't really had to work mess with a work tab. The only thing I've had to consider is, do I have enough workers for my uh, beavers? Now, ways in which it is like RimWorld, they do have well-being. So they're kind of negotiating that the whole time, but it's kind of all come into this big macro score that makes it so that they won't have like, or at least I haven't seen a beaver go crazy yet, but I think that they can starve. Um, I get a very occasion, it sounds like I'm leaning. I am uh, leaning away from the mic at times. Yeah, my monitor is on the other side. Yeah, he's sinful basilisk. Thanks for the, thanks for the sub. Yeah, one thing I haven't really perfectly done yet is like, uh, this is going to sound pretty amateurish, but I, I have not really worked on my audio for streams in a while. Most of the time when I do stuff in videos, uh, I do a lot of, like, post-processing, but for streams, I, I don't really do any of that. I'm just kind of having fun. I might do, like, a preamp and stuff like that. Um, anyway, if <laughs> some, something to work on over time. But let's see, though. As far as, like, beaver needs and issues like that, they do like houses because it helps them recreate, or, you know, procreate, recreate other beavers. How would I even say that? Yeah, have more beavers. I mean, it's it's beaver uh, reproduction, just 101. So we're going to go ahead and I guess we'll try to keep these things kind of close together. We can very easily dismantle these things, though. Don't know about the hot keying yet. There might be faster ways to do these things. I only just recently learned how to unlock the camera, which was quite a good thing because still in early access. I don't know how much of that stuff has been optimized and whatnot or whatever, but um, I'm kind of talking like a robot here. We built the gatherer flag. We do now need a farmhouse. So obviously they can't just gather berries forever. I don't know what beavers even eat IRL. We could do farmhouse here. Now, farmhouse will actually be used for farms, so we do need fertile soil for this. So I'm going to pick a, just a very obvious large square of grass to farm in. I think that that's probably going to be the wisest. But it's also, like, you know, it's not that limited also, too. They eat wood? I have no idea. I don't know. Beavers. I've never really taken an interest in them. It's been said that this is, like, the outcome of the Alpha Beaver invasion in RimWorld, so I kind of buy that. But, yeah, they just seem to kind of loiter about at the end of the day. But they can sleep on the ground, but their lives just are kind of garbage when we do that. So right now, their existence is, like, eating berries on the ground. Fantastic animations, though. Really nice. Look at this. I don't know why. I thought, I thought it would seem, like, under... Under polished, but the entire game just looks like a beautiful watercolor from practically any angle that you look at it. Which I think for most people is the main draw, I would imagine. Is there a destroy resource tool? I still haven't fully explored the swath, the plethora of options. So many things that you could do in this. But yeah, we are going to start to designate out some farms. Mm. Mm. And we will be kind of learning a bit more as we get further to the end. Never get that. Uh, plant carrots. Ah, that was in planting crops menu, so a little bit of it is not perfectly intuitive, I guess. But uh, Man, I really do sound like kind of a robot. But that's kind of nice, though. Now, if we do grow them on this ass soil, uh, they'll die. I think that's pretty much a given, but I haven't really tested it out too much. Maybe, like, some of them will live. Right now, I just trust these a little bit more. Again, I'm not like an absolute authority on it, but I, I know enough to get started. So we get the 70 carrots they told us to, we had to have. Now we need a log pile, a warehouse, and other stuff. I've been up to like damming and things like that. Um, 
log pile, small warehouse. Yeah, we'll need both of these. Let's put them in a centralized location where they could gather the resources and perhaps even use them. Uh, we'll use up this ass soil over here because we don't really need it. Uh, and the warehouse we might as well put over there too. But we want to leave our options open. So we'll have, uh, possibly we could have roads over there. I suppose... Let's centralize. Yeah, right there. Now, you know, like, greater city planning I haven't gotten into, and I haven't noticed beavers collide and, you know, feud or anything like that. Are beaver skills and professions a thing? I don't honestly know. Let's go take a look at some of our beavers up close. Now, they do have hunger, thirst, sleep, and shelter. Now, they can't reproduce beavers, which I suppose... I imagine many people watching my videos will be comparing this to Rimworld a lot, or... If you are looking to see if it's not like a clone, you know, um, they do reproduce. That's very different. Don't don't get at me with there's a mod for that in Rimworld because we need to have a world post Rimworld. You know, there's there will be other simulation games. Not that I think that people really feel that way, but my God, it's just so scenic. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can get any sweet like terraforming ah here is what i wanted okay so let's uh do this just as an example i want to show you how the cellular automata works we can have a beaver come over here and demolish this sometimes they're picky with paths like when it comes to structures are you what the hell are you doing oh you're using it as a bridge you charming mammal well i want to show everyone how the water works so uh probably one of them will come over and do this Okay, here it is. Good. He's, uh... There he is. He's just... <laughs> he's doing something with it. I think it is coming down. But l observe the water. I'm gonna try to get the water. Come on, water. Go. Okay, here's the water. So when he destroys that... Look, there comes the water. Look at the cellular automata happening. The minecrafting. Wowzers. You love that. Look at the squares being eaten up. Oh my god, look at the water level rising and the flow entering. We could even get down to the sheer level of the water. What a marvelous spectacle of wonderment. You love it. And look, even the flow of the water appears to be uh, uh, moving in a northerly direction. All right, you know, maybe I'm reaching for the top shelf here, but come on. That's something to look at. That's really nice. I've seen people do some crazy stuff like flooding. Even just a quick search down the YouTube rabbit hole reveals that there are tutorials. Rather well-made ones. People who do like these two-minute tutorials on how to flood stuff in this game. And I think that this is a really exciting idea because now you sort of have that... Like, I'm gonna go ahead and say that RimWorld is a very clean game. And like, epitomizes a lot of things that the colony management and building genre deserves to and wants to be. And that so many people have kind of taken a hint from it. But you've also got games that involve a lot of survival crafting and kind of lego -iness, like Minecraft. And I don't want to say just dismiss it as a kid's game or something. I think that would be foolish. It's silly. But uh, oh, we're going to have to do layer upon layer. I haven't even started stacking these things yet. But my god. But it kind of is combining those two things that are really appealing in their aesthetics to people. I know, I have no idea. I think I'm just going to do... You can mirror your lodges. Some of these controls, I think, should be able to... Uh, let's do this. Just so we keep our paths open. I want to keep options open. I think you can build vertically. I have not even gotten into the nitty-gritty of a lot of this stuff. So. Uh, but, I don't know. Just kind of, like, exciting game dev concepts coming together in a, in a fun way. I have to go back to work. I'm just going to yoink the number one spot before I go. Hey, everything bagel. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like an auction. <laughs> Thank you very much for the 501 bits. I appreciate that. Very generous of you. Um, all right, let's get the... I'll be like an auctioneer. No, of course, I'm kidding. But no, I don't know. I mean, I hope... What, what do you guys think, too? I know, I know I've kind of been looking away for a little bit and just kind of pontificating, but... I don't know. Does, anybody, does anyone have a thesis on that? The water velocity has changed depending on... This. I mean, there's even water velocity. That's like... You know, some of the stuff I don't even know is in the game yet. It looks as if... Ah, so this isn't just a tile count. This is some, like, very good math going on here. Look, even the paths show you, like, a heat map of how many beavers are going around them. I suppose that red means hot means more, right? 
It is. It's pretty satisfying to just watch. One of those games that's just as enjoyable to do stuff in as it is to actually build in it. We've got the lodges going up. I will say it does take them a bit of time to get some of these things built up. Um, but I, I, I think that's because... Uh, like, you know, why only one beaver assigned to the cutting down of trees? I think the whole employment system is a little... Like, I could see how that might be a bit... This is, these are really minor things, but... Like, for example, in a rim world, you know, anybody who's assigned to that task can do it. But it does seem as though these beavers have jobs. Which is kind of funny to think that a beaver has, like, a 401k. You know? <laughs> like, that. <laughs> I never thought I would edit that sentence. Um, but yeah. Um, there's a range of... Oh, so the range of who can work in the flag. Oh, well, that's the range of who can work in the flag, but also, too, like, this is a worker. I didn't even realize that we had a f camera follow mechanic, but this is something. This one is appears to be irradiated or covered in some sort of green goop. The city center has 50 tile range. Anything within 50 of the pass will be connected to the district center. Yes, that is also a thing. So, I mean, it's kind of like we can build in this small area right now, but we've got to... I assume that we're aiming to cover the entire map in water and beauty. Uh, we'll see in a few days. We haven't gotten the weather forecast yet, but the river will completely dry up and we'll have nothing. So we might even want to store more water. I didn't starve the last time. I know it doesn't seem like I'm doing a lot, but this is just legitimately how long it takes them to deliver wood here. I could build more flags for them to collect more wood, but what would really be the point? Uh, I just realized I did miss one thing, though, is that I forgot to tell them to cut down... Where is the cut trees? Here we go. I did forget to designate these trees for cutting, so they automatically allow some regrowing. It's, and they regrow fairly quickly, so that's fine, but... Yeah, there it is. I, said, I think you can still collect resources even when they're dried up. I just imagine dried out and dead. Okay, so you get fewer logs from it, maybe? Or I need to spot if I can spot any... See if I can spot any large... Well, this one does have eight, so... I don't want to make any definitive statements about the nitty-gritty of the game before I really know it very well. Um, I mean, I swear, I've been playing this game for only about an hour. So... Uh, if my knowledge sounds impressive to somebody who hasn't played it, it's not. There's probably a lot more going on that I don't know about yet. Um, but again, this is kind of like a let's try. That being said, it's very easy to get a hang of this. Hey, Grubite, thanks for coming out. Game is only fun for a while on hard. It becomes incredibly boring because that's the threat is only droughts and the city building aspect is lacking. I can see that as being, as being a potential critique. Yeah, I suppose so. Uh... You know, for me, I'll say this, as somebody who creates videos, I enjoy games that a lot of people find endless and boring because I can always keep on thinking of stuff to do with them uh, for a new video. But yeah, you know, stuff, but on the other hand too, stuff that's like a roguelite, like for example, Slay the Spire, I don't find anywhere near as fun to watch as I do to play. So now we're getting into like gaming political philosophy here. But I guess that's just kind of like a fundamental difference in the way that games are marketed and sold and like showcased on the internet versus how much fun they are actually for you to play. League of Legends, very fun to play. I would argue not as much fun to watch. Not anywhere near as much fun to watch. Um, and what is happening over here? The hunger is rising, but we've just got a lot of carrots coming out of the ground, so ignore all of that hunger. It'll be fine, I hope. Uh, we, we do have some more berries that we could gather, though, so I don't want to smooth the transition. I don't know, I care about them. They're kind of, admittedly, very cute. Animalia. Food? There. There do be food there. Alright, now we've got full, uh, water tanks. We could just fill an entire area, like, we could construct a dam here. I don't think I'm going to construct the dam for the first time. Number one, because the tutorial doesn't tell me to, and I want to go a little bit through it. But, I mean, these are things that we would be doing whether or not we were in the tutorial. We have a science beaver. A, an absolutely charming fact. Scaling difficulty is really the best thing 
and introduce new mechanics and using them over with your own ideas. I, I imagine seeing new classes of beaver, like the Iron Tooth Beavers. We don't want to get into some kind of class war among beavers, but I imagine that a lot of the more difficulty scaling stuff is on its way in the game. It is, after all, in early access. Uh, so, you know, eh, but... For example, things like this came up with Going Medieval. You know, like Going Medieval, a lot of people said the trebuchets are completely unbalanced, which they were hilariously unbalanced in the uh, in the in the total early access version. But you know, it seems like a little bit more like that here. But they've been publishing updates too. Anyway, I'm not gonna go into development so much more though. That'll be probably the last I talk of that. Let, I I kind of want to get more into the gameplay mechanics though. So we've got power. We've got a water wheel. Uh, too bad that they didn't name this a wagon wheel, because I also wanted more uh, references to modern folk songs like John Denver. We could have had Darius Rucker here. What an opportunity they passed up. But nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and build this. Now, I don't really know how the power flow with water velocity works, but perhaps it does. 180 HP. What could HP stand for? Whatever it is, it's power. We'll call it high power or something like that. I know what I'm going to need to build next, but are we going to have enough of it? I just want to make sure that I've optimized the labor distribution. I don't want to deforest that fast, so this is completely fine. Hydropower. What a, what a phrase. What is a computer game without class warfare? I, exactly. I mean, we were just talking about Songs of Six before. Uh, very kind of different aesthetic there, but... Actually, Songs of Six is one I'm, I'm kind of hyped to learn. It's taking me longer to learn it, though. Uh, but, you know, such is the way of the, the level of complexity in games that, uh, that we play. Alright, so 50 logs on this. A little, bit of, uh, a little bit of a bottleneck here, but at least we've got full water tanks. I think I'm going to fill up another one because this village seems to be growing a... Uh, I don't want to stop them on the water wheel, though, at the same time. Uh, you know, as long as we've got all of these beaver huts, they do reproduce surprisingly quickly. Now, I don't know the lifespan of them, but let's go see if we can find the oldest one to make an estimate. We've got one at 31, 43. I take it f maybe somewhere in their 40s, maybe 50. Either that or we just have a, an outlier young group of beavers, which is also plausible plausible to conceive similar stockpile systems to you know any colony manager that we've seen but can they is there a max so there is a max capacity of everything so we could say yeah hold more carrots in here but they can also hold the carrots in this place too i don't really know how they prioritize distribution or if they have this desired default no, uh yeah a lot a lot more controls than i've really given it credit for but we get the water wheel We'll give them some time. It looks like they've got to finish that up. The next thing that we're going to need to build, though, is where is it? It is a lumber mill. Lumber mill gets a little bit iffy here, so I want to make sure I do a decent job at this. Let's also place it in a way that will work with what I conceive to be the future of... Um, what, what is the... The name of our colony is how much wood would a wood stock stock? I know it's not a like a locale, but it's a, it deserves credit for its level of cleverness it is uh, it's very clever we have a drought incoming in three days i believe that this is a scripted event now can we show that water level again i don't know why that happened to me like sometimes it, i'm right clicking wrong i'm left clicking wrong what i'm doing but the blue and the green in this are just such perfect in such perfect color harmony power the lumber mill now we need to get the i've got the power uh, I got nothing. Alright, I'm pretty sure that we can just stick this in on any side. A couple of things are a little weird, like... Why don't power conduits just join together automatically? They've made it so that resources are a little bit more precious, I suppose. Which is kind of like the challenge in this game. I'm going to make it so that these things can join together on any side. Uh, who even knows what'll happen? I've seen things like demolition in this game. Just wild stuff. I see no reason to not just do straight pipes. The straight pipes are a little bit cheaper, and, you know, we don't have so many logs yet. We've been using logs for everything, so. Songs of Six is a bit of a doozy. Yeah, so, you know, 
As a person like me, you find you try to find games that strike a balance between accessibility and, you know, depths of systems. Like, for example, Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Probably one of my favorite games ever to uh, play. I wouldn't watch it as much as I would want to play it. You know what I mean? Um, unless if I were learning it, I suppose. Or like, uh... I don't know, really any number of, like, ASCII-based ro based roguelikes. Desired an amount is not a maximum amount. They will fill, fill past the desired amount of possible. One resource... Oh, so that is actually just a guideline. Hmm. So if I bring this down to 20, they'll still fill even if they have more carrots. Uh, that's pretty smart of them, actually. I don't know, it feels like a lot of things in the nitty-gritty where, like... People will... I mean, I've seen people play deeper or, like, more complex colony builders than this, like a rim world. I don't know if you would really call it that, but I've seen people rage at the computer, like friends who otherwise enjoyed uh, I, what I would call like popular strategy or 4X games, like Civ. Like I got a friend who, who played Civ and then he played Rimworld and he was like, this is not, well, this is not for me. Or, or would just kind of go quiet and give up. Uh, a particularly bad feeling. <laughs> um, where are we now? Okay, so we've had a harvest of carrots. We've got the drought coming. I think we'll be done with pretty much the entire tutorial by then, but I do want to, let's see, Forester. Uh, can't unlock Forester, not enough science points. So we've got, how many science points? We've got 54 science and Javin, who speaks Simlish or something like that, is, uh, oh God, he's enjoying his home. Life expectancy plus 25%. I suppose that's kind of accurate, but his walking speed is increased. Now, this is kind of nice, though, and... Ah, oh, this is actually kind of, uh... More motivation to have all those alternate resources. I guess it makes the gameplay loop a little bit more linear, though. Just the idea that... For, like, the more variety and luxury you have among your colonists, that they get these kinds of bonuses. This is a very... Kind of RPG interesting concept. When are we going to get our Zork playthrough? Everyone's waiting for it. <laughs> I have a few a uh, little bit more like uh, obscure games I have I have planned. Kind of dotted between the more nice seeing I suppose, my popular amphibian ones. On stream. Yeah, hey, mine's still trapped. Thanks much for the sub. Happy to see you back. All right, so we're going to unlock the forester. It does show us the technologies to be unlocked in the game. I suppose it can work over this area, and since we're copying to be a or, uh, after Chuck Norris, but taking they down to these things because nobody crosses Chuck Norris and lives. I see what you did there. A uh, game of schlongs. How it goes? Happy to see you, my friend. Hmm. So I guess we'll want to deforest the areas that we're unforesting. This is probably going to get kind of crowded in here. But there is some vertical building, and what I'm kind of wondering is how are we going to get higher up? We're going to need some stairs to get up there. Look at all those trees. All right, now we've got only another half of a day before the uh, giant shitstorm comes in. We got that. Oh, and we also need some planks. Work harder. Work harder. Good. She is making planks. My God. It it does seem as if there are a couple of little bottlenecks like that, but what what game doesn't have them, to be fair? What doesn't have them? Naples produce the wood most wood per growing day, so they take the longest to grow, but are also the most drought tolerant. Hard mode is the only mode that can actually kill them. Yeah, I, I can clearly see myself playing this on hard mode if I went any further. Right now we're on normal, just because we, you know, I'm an hour into the game, so I kind of want to play it the way that it's meant to be played, but, uh, yeah. I mean, the main complaint, I guess I've heard from people who have, like, tens of hours is... Okay, here goes the drought. I barely missed that, but I'm going to show it to you right now. So, see the river that we had before that was flowing so ethereally across our plain? Now all of the trees have dried out. Watch what happens when the water dries up from the lake. And it's not like that this is just some kind of scripted event. It does seem like it's... Uh, well, I mean, the drought itself is, I suppose... But now the lake is actually drying up, so the water level in here, we can't really see it, but it is going lower. I'm going to speed up time. You can kind of see it moving down. I'm going to try to get up close, but I don't want to miss what happens next. Because it's going to go by pretty quickly. 
So once the water level leaves and it's outside of this radius, we've got like one large spot of water right here. You're going to see like poof. All of this is going to dry up. If Is time going? There we go. Okay, now it's going to dry up. So watch what happens. All of the grass is fading. It becomes less fertile. And there go the bushes. There go the last of the trees. And because the water level is still kind of around right here, and I don't think that it's flowing. I believe that the water will just stay in that lake. But this is the central mechanic of how you're supposed to kind of manage water in the game. And it does have a level in here that it takes up. And you can build dams and things like that. So that area will stay fertile. Of course, like if we had beavers pulling water from there, they would, um, you know, they would use up the water over time. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, they don't really have anything to do right now. So it's kind of like a dry spell. We've got 2.3 days left, so a three-day drought. Uh, but, you know, I've done the tutorial, so they'll be fine. Uh, we've got to plant some pines. So now we'll just kind of prepare for, you know, the rest of our lives in here. Plant bushes and trees. We'll plant, plant pines like the tutorial wants us to. We'll be sheep and, you know, uh, here we are. 20 pines, but let's go ahead and plant some. Can we plant maples? Days to grow 24, but logs 8, so that's one log every three days. This is one log every six days. This is one log every nine days. So this is like the fast one that I really need it right now. Like I need the money for your rent kind of tree. That's the birch. But the maple seems to be the most efficient. And since we aren't really in much danger of running out of wood, I'm going to go ahead and say that we have the luxury of planting maples. Nice. But why would you plant the other ones, really? It would be nice to see more reasoning to plant the other ones, I suppose. Like, I don't know, different... Unfortunately, the tutorial does kind of leave us high and dry. Pun intended. Sad life for the beavers. But I suppose that we'll try to uh, build out from here. That's pretty much the extent of my knowledge. So, from here on, I'm going to be more or less exploring the game. Uh, can we make ourselves a lake and dam it up? We absolutely can. One thing that I'm going to do is probably... I mean, well, this is where most of the thinking comes in. Uh, see, what happens is that the water source just stops sending us water. So we kind of have to take a look at the topography of this place. We had water flowing through here, but we could dam things. We could even create artificial lakes and flood it in various ways. You know, we could make it so that we pretty much have a bottomless source of water. Or we could make it so that the river is just kind of damned for now. I'm going to go ahead and damn the river. I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. Because I think it'll be fu more fun to make mistakes rather than just... I don't know, think and play well. I, I just kind of want to have a good time. I don't see this playthrough going quite as far. Um, hmm, labor. Small warehouse. Where is our dam? Out there, uh, damn decoration monuments. Leisure, we do have all these other kinds of bonuses that we can give them. Wood, gear workshop, storage, landscaping. This is more like it. Okay, dams, levees, floodgates, double flood. Now, these, these ones give us more control, but right now we have the primitive um, dam. Yeah, I've got a joke for you. What did the fish say when he bumped his head? Damn. <laughs> ah, that was so good. Ah, oh, gee, that was a real knee slapper. Plant pines. When after all planted, cancel half the, the trees are cut. I replant the cancel area with maples. When you plant pines, grow up. I don't know. I th I think maple just seems like a good idea for me to get started right now. Call me a simpleton. Why are you just, like, curating this spot? Now, their well-being has improved to five. How much better can their guy their lives get? Can we have every moment just be ecstasy for them? Because now, suddenly, I care about them. Building lacks power. Yes, obviously, because we have this. Ah, and this leads me into my next magic trick. Power wheel. Here we go. So, during times of hardship... It was known by our ancestors who were not apes, but actually beavers. Can, can we get to work now, lads? 
We're going to give them a power wheel so that they can power this and have power. During times of hardship, because eventually, even during droughts, this flow will, I assume, stop. Is this going to kill my entire settlement? And also, what water level will it allow it to? It would be interesting if it did stop my entire thing, but then we could just destroy part of it and, you know, life would be better. Water wheel won't move. Well, it should allow it up to a certain level, so let's just see how the river does. I think it would be funny to dam the entire river. Or also, too, I mean, you know, the best way that you can learn is just by making mistakes. It's going to take them quite some time to get done with all of this, though. But night. I suppose one thing I'd like to see is a little bit more individual beaver-like. You know, it's, it's okay, but it, it would be interesting to see whether they go more in the direction of, like, uh, more hardship for the beavers as a whole, as a group. You know, like, struggle. Or whether they'll go more into personalized beaver accommodations. What are we upset about now? Oh, we have no water. Oh, well, hang on a second. The water is coming back, isn't it? The drop. Yeah, here comes the water again. So here comes the water flowing down the stream. Isn't that majestic? Look at that. Wow. So beautiful. Let's zoom in on it. You've seen the water as it flows in. It gets to a higher level and higher as it goes on. But look, there it goes. Rising up. That's nice. You love it. I think it's a little weird that we can just see solid grass under here, but nonetheless, it's satisfying. Uh, and the water is making its way down through the valley. A little slow, but it, it gets the point across. My god, that's beautiful. That's really satisfying. I almost like that cycle too much. The, oh, the lake. Oh, yeah, show me the lake. Oh, I love that. That's amazing. 0.75 uh, amount of a tile? Or 75%? Ah, that's good. But we need to prepare for the next drought because my beavers are going to cr keep creating beavers. The goal, I suppose, is to support beaver op overpopulation or something like that. Now what happens with the gardens? Dried out and died, so they'll need to replant. So it's... It's kind of like a major bottleneck if we keep getting drought, droughts, droughts, whatever they are. Um, by the looks of it, it appears as if... I think I'm going to completely screw myself here. I'm really interested in what happens when I, when I flood this whole place. I think it's just going to ruin everything, but... Well, you know, the best way that you learn is by making mistakes, so let's do that. Uh... For right now, as far as I can tell, what's going on is that we're getting just like an endless stream of water that goes in and out of the map. So this is pretty much an infinite source right here. And then when we get over to our compound area, I guess it's eventually just going to overrun the dam and then flood this plain. But if we wanted to start getting water up and over into these areas, we'll need to flood higher. And eventually, I suppose, we'll need to get really good at diverting the water if we want to ever step foot onto these higher reaches, you know? But just, yeah, a lot of options for exploring, but kind of more verticality than I would expect from a colony builder. What are we upset about now? Oh, no food. Uh, that actually might be rather bad. Then we I thought we had some. Then we have some stored up. No, we have none. Uh, we have no carrots either. Okay, let's colonize another area. So we're going to need to either migrate our population to somewhere else or... Oh, that's not good at all. Well, seeing as this has a radius far beyond its kind of like uh, area right here, let's see if we can get a stairway going up there. Um, paths and structures. District center, district gate. Wooden stairs seems like something worth researching because... Oh, we already had, like, a natural staircase. Well, nature is abhorrent and, uh, no, nature is, nature is great. What am I saying? We've got four planks. Well, we've certainly got all of that, right? Fifty-nine logs. How many planks? How many planks? Look at the planks. Nineteen out of, we're good. We're fine on planks. There's a similar type of aquatic grass called Valis often called eelgrass as well. 
What if I build an underground reservoir so that I have my own special undroughtable lake to siphon off of? You could probably go to that level of complexity. Like, for example, yesterday I was following uh, Kit Fox Games. I don't know if any of you have been keeping up with the development of Dwarf Fortress, which is the granddaddy of all, like, um, colony sims. Uh, but Zach Adams had actually put out a recent video of himself creating, like, an underground lake. Or an underground well in Dwarf Fortress, which was super interesting. It actually held my attention for a uh, whopping, like, seven minutes or so. Very amazing. Thanks for the What they're doing over there. Hey, Stefron, thank you very much for the bits. Much appreciated. Thank you for the generous thousand bit donate. Yeah, very, very thank. Oh, God bless you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um. Hmm. I will try to not have my beavers starve to death. Now, why are we not building this? Unpaid laborers? Hmm. Oh, because we're hungry. That, well, that is actually quite a good reason to not build something. Watered and alive. We do have 43% growth. Well, I'm trying to get you to more food if only you'd eat it. Uh, let's go ahead and build the uh, food gathering flag because we need a flag to do our jobs because we're picky. Mm, I suppose that we can build it over here, right? We'll build one there. And one up right. there, and that way hopefully they'll use them both. But let's also get paths going over here. Hey, Everything Bagel, thank you very much for the 500 bits. Much appreciated, my friend. Can we path this way? Yeah, good. Path this. Now, my one thing that we're going to start to confront now is with worker management. And I wonder how they'll start to engage with this task. As we go, we're going to pause gathering at this flag because we just don't really have food over here. I don't see why I would employ any of them over here. We've got paths over here, but they've still got to build up this. So we need one beaver to make the conscious decision to come over here and build this. Otherwise, perhaps some of them will die. My god, how does their health even work? Do they- will they just start to- Or is it okay for them to just starve? Yeah, the beaver will die. Okay, so much is expected. But how do we know about, like, beaver health care? Do we have a- Like a health keeper portal? Or something like that? Perhaps not. I hear about the game Inscription. I've been told about this Inscription game. Maybe I should go check it out. Increase its build priority. Alright, so we'll raise that up to the top. Ah, very smart you are. Very smart boy. Okay, good. Now we've had a beaver come up. So we do have some basic outline of a prioritization system. No unemployed beavers in this district. Okay, so what we need to do is redistribute the beaver employment from here to over there. No unemployed beavers in this district, so uh, water is fine. Let's also just tell them to st stop building this garbage for a minute. Or I don't really want to ruin it. Oh my god, will they die? We've got somebody here. No unemployed beavers. My god, okay, we need to act fast. No science. None of that. Okay, well, clearly we don't need so many trees. Let's pause that one. Let's also pause this one because there just aren't any trees over here. And good. Now we could have a forest. Okay, this will go a little bit better now. Hopefully when they wake up, they'll make some conscious decisions to change their ways. I don't think that we need too many more logs, so we don't need to employ them in lumberjacking. A little funny that... As far as I have seen, I don't know of like a beaver work screen. It's more just building by building as to who does what job. But is it here? Maybe it's hidden somewhere in the inventory. No, that's the pause button. Maybe it's hidden somewhere in the inventory that I can't find it. This is just normal stuff. Mm. Mm. Ah, still nonetheless satisfying. I suppose we could divert the water, increase the water velocity in here as well. Quite nice. Now the water level ha level has risen, so I assume that when we finish this off, it's probably going to either just raise the water level before it, or flood that area. But we should be able to get some water during times of drought. I can't say drought. I want to say drought, but then I say drought, and I believe that's right. Still no unemployed beavers. 
who's not doing their job. Mm, you're doing your job. You're doing your job. I think most of them are just disposed to building right now. Let's prioritize this down a bit. Because we don't have the drought coming right now. Good. Many of you are farming. Did we have all of our beavers? Oh, crap. All of our beavers have died and I didn't even... Wow, so we're down to five now. So if we turn off these houses and we turn on the other ones, maybe we could get these beavers. Yes, good. We've got lots of... Hang on a second. You get out of that house. Now we've got... Yes, we just had another beaver. Somehow. Who is this child? We'll sing green sleep. What child is this? And the beaver. It's a child beaver. So beautiful. Ah, uh, the miracle of life. Here it is. Wowzers. Go, baby. Baby beaver. <laughs> it's like a portmanteau of baby and beaver. The child is instantly homeless. The child is instantly home. That is true. Except... We have six beavers, not five. This is not... This is a lie. There's some beaver, like... Alright. Well, at least we learned something. We need to get the beavers to live together because otherwise they're very, like, solitary animals. And they won't... We crashed the beaver economy. Ah, that, well, that's kind of a relief. Okay, we promoted beaver sex through federal policy. All right, I, I suppose everything is, is improved now. Um, hang on a minute. I'm just making some notes for myself. I want to kind of save off that part. Hmm. Where are we at now? Hmm, one... 25. Okay. Well... We were able to repopulate B Bavaria through uh, the promotion of communal housing. So he forced all of the beavers into uh, a coitus and they all had babies. So now we have one child beaver. It's age, no, not age 51. It's probably going to die soon. This one is named Shetsy. I, we can rename them. Interesting. Uh, but we had basically what is currently the problem in the U.S. or is about to befall the United States my own home country right now. Um, we're going to try to keep these ones alive. We're about to finish off this dam, though we had mismanaged some of our resources, but at least we learned to keep the beaver population stabilized. So we're going to keep these houses uh, on... Uh, we're going to keep nationalizing them. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm saying. But at least we've got them all in these similar houses. If only I could go them two by two. That way I could get all the beavers to mate. I think this... I can't honestly tell if they're male or female. We'll just hope. We'll just hope. But as they keep growing and rising, they should exponentially have more beavers. So they've got you working here. Actually, you work to stop working there because we need to plant trees and not cut them down. So we'll need to manage our workers a little bit more. But there's something kind of exciting about the thought of starting a city from just two beavers. I don't know, maybe even food for a challenge. Kick the cat out so that they can make another baby. How do we kick the... How do I kick you out of your home? We can't uh, do that, I suppose. You need to this faction, Vriska. To zone tree planting. These beavers survive on thoughts and prayers. Well, now we're getting a little bit desperate, I think. Either that or we could just make larger housing. Well, on the other hand, too... You know, we've got logs coming out so that we can get more of them uh, living here as we go. And we've almost got the next drought coming. Okay, this is actually getting quite dangerous. A little bit iffy. We do have these bushes that we could keep harvesting. We'll tell them that they're allowed to do this. Uh, in fact, don't work there. But good. We Now we have yet another beaver. We have seven of them. Can we keep them all alive? We have 124 carrots, which should be more than enough to keep them... Sated. I don't believe that there's any sense of spoiling or refrigeration, thankfully. But now with more than enough food and more than enough planks, we've paused construction of planks. And good. The maples are growing back. Though I suppose we could also, too, have them go up here and just cut down these dead trees, which might ultimately be a better alternative. Hmm. Might need to use up more of these resources before we get to these next parts. 
In fact, stop building this. There we are. Let's just use these paths, and now I'm going to use what I've learned. It should be able to, yes, use this lumberjack flag to, yes, cut down these other trees. Okay, so even if we get some horrible drought, we can still get more resources because logs seem to be the major bottleneck right now. Good, good. Okay, cut down all of this. And, you know, probably this too because this is all dead. Yeah. Nice. Right, and we'll just up the priority of that building. Uh, there we are. Okay, good. Someone new can be employed. Uh, perhaps that child that was just born. I kind of like this. Uh, you are unemployed from here. So a little bit of micromanagement, I suppose. Like, that wasn't really something that I fully anticipated happening. And it seems as though we've cut off water flow here with this. So I'm going to need to be a little bit more careful with this thing. Because otherwise I'm going to need to have a beaver just walking around that, disposed to that all the time, so... A couple of mismanagement mistakes, but we kind of expected them to happen anyway. And it does appear as if the water is starting to dry up now. No, here it goes. Uh, I'm starting to see what a, a quick solution to this would have been. It's just as much a puzzle game as it is management a little bit. Because, yep, there goes the water. Crap. Uh, we don't have enough to retain all of the water. If only we had dammed just that one spot we could have forced it in. But now it seems like we're all going to die in a... in a heap. Oh, come on, get to work. Get to work. Get those carrots out of the ground before it... Ah, uh, crap. No. Okay, stop farming and start, uh, getting lumber so that we can dam up the rest of this. Though maybe that's just part of the gameplay loop, is like... Well, are these, do they have the same amount of wood? They do have the same amount of wood. Even when they die. So I suppose that there's sort of like a gameplay loop of... Yeah, these will never even grow. We wasted a couple of resources. But it seems as though you're meant to... At least in the beginning, wait until everything dies, then get all of the wood, dam up the places where you're farming... I mean, I don't know if this was entirely obvious, but I, I remember things when I experienced them in a horrible way. Damn things up, like that little lake or whatever it was. Miniature lake. And then exert a little bit more of control over the nature around us so that we aren't dying all of the time. The population is coming back up, and it seems like it does kind of stabilize out. That you could get only to a, such a low number. You know, like, something's gotta give after a while. Hmm. Hey, Smitty, welcome in. Sorry to hear that. Hope you're doing better. Soon. Takes time for crops to die, so you can get the fully grown carrots out of the ground still. Oh, so actually, some of these carrots are still harvestable. Okay, let's have them come back in. Come on, gather them. Go get them out. Don't lose them. It appears to me as if they have the same animation for everything. Like, I think that this was the deconstruction animation as well, but... Yeah, it works. I mean, that's pretty much how I... I think something without any opposable thumbs would interact with anything else. Such fantastic animals. Probably terrifying and deadly. Hmm. Mm, so we can kind of expand beyond our base's radius. Like, our base goes only this far, but if we construct paths... And of course they can go a little further. Oh, and they actually can. So if we were to do... Uh, now I see what we're saying about the path thing. So if I were to take them a little bit further out, maybe that was as far as they were allowed to go with the base. Uh, maybe. Not quite sure about that. But yeah, the paths do seem to extend the radius a bit. At least that's what seems is going on. Uh, nonetheless, we will create a campfire. And now we will allow them to live in slightly more housing. This way, hopefully, they will start to pair up. Or rather, hook up with other beavers. And then make more of them. Good. Camping ground. Even though that we have a drought for the next half a day. Hey, we didn't go hungry. And there's more of you every day. Because you're uh, getting, uh, getting it on at the campground alone, apparently. It's just a child here, though. 
but my god, the years pass by in moments. This child didn't even exist a few minutes ago, and now here it is. I believe it also had a name change. No, Shatsi is now seven? Shatsi was just one. Well, maybe if they socialize more, they'll have marriage, or they'll just keep living in sin. There they go. Ah, get in there. Stripe a cup of conversation with somebody. Maybe have a, a glass of uh, uh, of beer or something with some of the other ones. Or I don't know what you drink. Milk or... It seems as though two of them are being excluded. All right, there we go. Maybe we had like some sort of uh, snoo snoo going on in there. Oh, look, we did. There's another beaver born. Ah, excellent. All right, great. Now we can start to... Uh, Denationalize some of the housing and make way for private. No, one of them died though. My god, their lives, they're like ants. Or what is that animal that lives for one day? It's like an insect or something. Path also put railings on the dams so we can use the dams as bridges, which can allow you to span rivers and access land on both sides, increasing your. My god, that's an excellent idea. Yeah, it seems like. You know, you're so limited to the area that you start in, but if you just create pathways and ingenious ways to dry up the land, or dry up the water around, or excuse me, make it stagnant, that will overall improve your vitality in life. Ah, uh, here comes the river again. I just love the animation of the river flowing through, though, that I can't help but enjoy being dr uh, in the middle of a drought a bit. Our maple trees didn't die either, so we've got that back. What a magical moment. Fruit flies. Yeah, some type of fly. I can't remember exactly which one it was. The mayfly, I believe. Yeah, mayfly. In the lower left-hand corner is an event window that can tell you who was born and who died. As soon. Ah, yes, we've got this. Ah, uh, Submaraz. How long was Submaraz alive, though? Hmm. It's too bad that you can't go over to that beaver's profile. That is unfortunate indeed. Well, let's begin planting more trees. We might as well. Got plenty of wood now. All right. Uh, it's a little unclear to me what's going on in terms of the days. Like, beavers seem to grow up and die in about 10 days. And yet it still tells you that they're like five years old. So that is a little jarring, I suppose. Now we need to ask ourselves, though, how do we capture this water here? Hmm, I think we're going to need science again, so we'll allow that. We're going to dam up the river because I just want to see and observe what happens with it. I think we're going to get some overflowing in terms of flooding. Another thing that I noticed in terms of the way that they construct is that they always build things in the order in which you assign them, which is fairly intuitive. It's not like some kind of proximity system. Uh, but just, I suppose, make sure that you construct things in the right order. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's like, it, it kind of invites this math-y thing going on. It's like, there's not real math in this game, but a little bit more than I would do in RimWorld. And I'm thinking still about the colony and the way that things are managed, but I'm not thinking so much about my individual settlers like I am in RimWorld. Like, is he happy? What does he need? Can I improve his bedroom? So it's not quite so much The Sims, it's more like a puzzle game mixed in with this. Alright, I said I would stop doing that. Build progress 50% waiting for materials. Looks like that the river is flowing pretty well again. And we are still getting good river flow with this well here. Now we've kind of dried up one of our beavers by forcing him to work on this. Let's go ahead and just pause work on that and see if this thing still works when we've got this thing flowing. 15 out of 20. I'm really interested in, like... In all likelihood, the water will just come up over the sides and then go right back down into the river. But I want to I wanna know. This type of thing could get really interesting over time. Good. Now two children are born. We might need more campfires so that they could all gather around them because clearly there are only five seats here. And beavers are very picky, and they need a seat to sit on while they're socializing and wooing one another with their outstandingly large teeth. All right, so now we've finished off the dam. What will happen? 
Ah. It doesn't appear as if anything is really going on, but here's what's happening. As if it as it appears to me. It has slightly raised the level of the river on this side and slightly lowered it on this side. And I didn't really get this. Okay. But it creates kind of like a like a slide for the water to go down, sort of. And assuming that these banks are non-porous on either side, the water will slide down and it will continue to flow at a similar rate. I don't really know whether it'll go like slower or faster or how to measure water. Let's water through with no issue if you place floodgates. Yeah, so if we place floodgates, we could control it a little bit more directly. But this kind of like shores up the water a bit. However, when we get another drought, drought, I keep wanting to say drought, drought, the water should stay on this side of the dam, I'm thinking, until we've used up all of the water from this side of the river. Meaning that we've essentially lowered the amount of time we need to experience a drought for. So, I'll be interested in what happens after that. We could more directly control it by creating an artificial lake and giving ourselves like a, a, a vastly larger supply of water. But this is good. And we've still got our well running, or rather water wheel running. Um, and yet with only eight beavers, this colony is doing okay again. Not amazing, but okay. Thrilling. Another dam in a... Yeah, we could put a small dam in the little lake. I suppose that's really the area that it's more essential, but I want to go one at a time, you know? Do these things through little sci controlled scientific experiments so that you can understand what's going on in the deeper systems. I wouldn't really want to watch too many tutorials on this. I think part of the fun is just kind of experiencing it in the game. Hmm. You need to work harder. Or we need to increase employment somehow. Hmm. Are we all leaving a part again? And not making any more people? Okay, I'm going to tell you to move out of some of these houses. There we are. Okay, now we're living in sin again. This is what we wanted. We're growing up. And some of them are laboring that way. Okay, good. 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 Okay, I would have this no other way. Now all we need to do is keep promoting beaver socialization. So let's go into other things that will allow them to have leisure. A rooftop terrace. Place for them to relax and socialize in the evening. Must be placed atop other buildings. Visitor is six, so that could slightly raise the uh, proportion of our beavers. Having this ground only above ground. Temple. A temple? Or a carousel? Why would that be the only object of merriment? Hmm. It seems as though that perhaps there are other items that are going to be added into the game. Forester, we already have one of those. Gear workshop, I suppose there's more we could do. Eh, though, you know, none of our resources are really in, like, dire need. We have a forester, we have most of our resources coming back up. I think from this point on, all that we really need is... Wait. Yes, let's observe and wait a little bit longer. We have nine. They're slowly rising up. Can you live in my beaver town? Come on in. You just need to make yourself into a computer program. That's all. Yeah. Next step, wage war. I su yeah, I suppose that's uh, uh, another thing that might seem like it's lacking. Almost every game now that exists has combat in it. Like... I know it's harder to do this now, that we don't have as many physical discs of games, but I remember when I was a kid, I lined up all of the games I had for my Xbox 360, and I just categorized them in terms of what is it, what game involves fighting, and what doesn't, and like 95% of the games that I owned involved fighting in some way. <laughs> and I was just like, wow, we are a violent people. Or that is to say that all of the experiences that we fantasize fantasize about I suppose in our gaming needs involve things that would never happen in real life like a Quentin Tarantino movie you know mm. fun because it's ridiculous we could get books bread carrots let's start to see what other things we could do to speed up our beavers is there anything we could do to increase their fertility for example let's take a look at one of them nutrition social life they do have a campfire this raises the fertility 
Ah, so having both a campfire and a rooftop terrace would actually raise the fertility even more. Methinks... Let's have this. Mm, we could have a platform, but that would cost a lot of science. I think what we need to do is this. Domiciles. Lodges. All about. Let's have a back row. Okay, this is like more low-income housing. Uh, it's not quite as nice. We built more paths this way. Uh, out in the back. And you can get up here. But you could get up on top of the house and woo the other beavers. See, that's nice. You love that. Oh, yes, you do. I don't really want to go about building a lot of platforms. And suddenly we have a lot of logs back in our lives. So this is very pleasing to me. And the other beaver type, you make beavers in test tubes. What, so the beavers have given up, like, organic reproductive methods? Or natural? Not really organic, just natural. Puzzle games are a great way to divert the gameplay from violence to other things. Yeah, use your mind, not your body, to enjoy the puzzle games. I'm enjoying these... <laughs> I'm enjoying these violent games with my body. <laughs> I suppose that's like the trade-off. But it's something, you know? I mean, it's something to be proud of. It has so many different parts to it, and it feels so non-standard. Because the game has made... Uh, what you... Now, why this is a little odd? It seems like the water is higher on this side. There's some serious, like, computer science going on in here. Look at this. That's marvelous. I just feel bad for all of the sad dead trees. Eh, we have maples growing up. You're doing a great job. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to me. Now, do you destroy the stump or do we need to de-stump? No, it, the stump is just there until... A mighty forest, how I pine for thee. Unknown... Oh, what poem is that? I feel guilty, I... That's like my... I feel like I should know that reference. I know John Denver, but I don't know... Po uh, how how basic I feel from that, you know? Oh, well. Alas. Okay, the beavers are sleeping together somewhat. Let's just tell them to get out of this. Still a little unclear as to whether... Like, how many beavers need to be there. Oh, we have 11 suddenly. Okay, so they're still... Yes, they're still reproducing. Very good. You know, keep doing what you're doing. Now to raise the fertility even more. Rooftop terraces. What a funny... This is ridiculous. <laughs> Everything in this game is just like... Okay, so <laughs> we do that. I, I'll admit that the location wasn't perfectly ideal, but... You know, it would have been nicer if they had a view off the front of the gardens. But, I mean, you know, I'm not such an ass that... Some structures get constructed right when you, like, assign them, like, paths are automatically made. found it interesting that I didn't actually have to have them create those. It might be... To be quite honest with you, it might be nice if the beavers had to take a second to build the path. Uh... Also, too, I mean, in the sound department, this game is fantastic. Great soundtrack. I haven't gotten tired of it yet. It hasn't been very long, but it seems like the type of thing that would never get repetitive, really. Uh, look, they're having such a great time! Oh, look, they're telling stories. Some of them are on the ground. Those are the pens, but now we have enough time for all of the beavers, or enough space for all of the beavers to d say something about their day. Maybe they'll even say a high or a low about their week. Maybe they could do that around the campfire. That'd be nice. Hmm. If physical violence was much more acceptable, we wouldn't need so much of it in our video games and movies. Who knows? Hmm. Fair enough, I guess the thing that you deprive yourself of, as a society, which we largely deprive ourselves of violence. This is getting kind of, this sounds a little, uh, sketchy now. But yeah, I suppose that that, that's just one way of putting it. Hmm. What I'd really like to do is see if I can get more of the land to be fertile. Now we've, you know, I think we're making it so that we could subsist, but let's really expand. One beaver just died again. Who was it? Jabber. How old do they live to... Let's go ahead and take a look at them. Mm. 
My viewers are happier than ever. I've reached a new well-being high score. Oh, so they actually do have a high score for this. Population of well-being. So, ah, this is kind of a nice way to see how fertile they'll become. Reach average well-being of eight while playing folk tales. We'll get... Oh. So if we get them all feeling better about themselves, then we unlock the next beaver type. Okay, that's a way to progress through the game. That's nice. So often the complaint is that, you know, there's no end goal. Hey, BI4ZN, thanks very much. Floodgates flood the land for science. Well, clearly these things won't flood anything, I suppose. I'm excited for the next drought, though. Um, hmm. I'm trying to see where I would want to create a flood, though. I think one thing that'll make it fun is that it seems like that you could really get lost in this for hours because my my eyeballs are bigger than my stomach. Or is your beaver? How does the saying go? <laughs> Indeed, they are. Hey, Ether Renegade, thanks very much. Mm, see what you did there. See what you did there. Ten adults, but they do seem to be expanding and rising. Yes, the beavers are even now happier. Uh, yes, we're going to go ahead and make even more happiness. Now we need more statues. What do we have? Flame of Progress. These sound a little bit ambitious in their projects, right? Leave your temple only. Decoration. Shrub. Shrub within one time. Well, that's just an aesthetic thing. Let's have a mom monument. Mm, flame of Progress. Hey, Baked Bean. Thanks very much for the sub. I think we need to inspire... No, that costs 3,000. What's something easier that we can do uh, in a shorter span of time? Plant crops. Let's plant new resources. I think that would... Uh, I think that would probably make them happier and it would just up the level of overall variety in the area. Let's have some weed and some other junk over here. Oh my god, it looks amazing. But why are these ones just gray? Is there some kind of blight on the crops that I missed? Oh, that's what they're planning on planting there. It's only because they had that part of the menu opened in the UI. I was afraid that there was some sort of aphid or disease overtaking my crops. Hmm. Oh, cycle three, day 11. So it goes in cycles. I was thinking only three days had passed, which I realized was impossible because so much going on. Oh my god, I can relate to these people. I sit out on my porch too when I'm done with a long day. My god, those chairs look like garbage. I bet they charge them thousands and thousands of dollars to create those chairs, though. They look really like something that a, I don't know, someone would seek out at a higher price at a designer store. Now I'm set on making them very glad. But where did their well-being go? Is this their average? Okay, so this is their average well-being. They need grilled potatoes. They need bread. They need a roof. Shrub labor monument. Fun carousel. So if we direct them toward building a carousel, they'll be happier. But also extremely expensive. My god, these things are expensive. Discharges water. Small water tank. Large water tank would probably be a little bit more efficient. Hmm, grist mill grinds wheat into flour. We will need one of those if we start to make wheat. Grill? We could probably get by with a grill pretty quick. Yeah, I think let's build one of those. We could have, like, some kind of charming chef beaver that everyone, you know, uh, visits whenever they get their meal. That'd be nice. Not that, you know, ch chefs have to be charming. They could be... I don't know, all the chefs I've met have been very charming people, though. Very endearing. But I know that some aphids explode in predators' faces to help the rest of the colony. I don't know much about aphids at all. I was just reading about the extinction of the, uh, of the chestnut tree in North America. Sad. No unemployed beavers anymore. Okay. I don't want to do that. A lot of them are builders. I guess we have to keep builders by default. Good 11 now. Yes. Yes, they're beginning to reproduce. We have 213 food. Nothing can stop us. But only 84 water. We'll probably want to up our overall water storages. 
Let's go ahead and build a larger water tank. But do we have the science for it? Yeah, why not? What else are we doing with our lives? Absolutely nothing. We're playing a game about beavers, for God's sake. Uh, mm, I think that this is... There it belongs. It's kind of a funny shape for a building, but striking and charming nonetheless. I don't think that anything looks good. Well, it, it kind of all comes together aesthetically, no matter how you put it together. Except mine always manages to look bad. They need smoke weed and horseshoes. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting if they implemented a few more systems, but I, I think that there's enough quirky ridiculousness in it. I, I appreciate one thing. I mean, you know, one thing that I'll keep going back to RimWorld, for example, is that it does have a lot of weird, quirky stuff in it, but this has just enough weirdness and quirkiness to get by. And it's all executed pretty well. And there they go. Teleporting into their chairs. <laughs> ah, that is nice. Alright, let's just make sure that they're not all living separately again. It's quite annoying. Good, they aren't, like, uh, protesting my forced... Forcing that they all live together. Now we're up to 12 beavers again. Okay, we've got a population going. The rise of the beaver proletariat. Hmm. Alright. I feel safe. We have 240 food. However many beavers it is, it's enough. We do need gears for this thing, though. I did not even realize that. It seems that you could completely build things in the wrong order and just totally miss it, so... This was a bit of a waste. Alas. Hmm. Maybe I should just... end construction of this thing. I might have just wasted planks, though. Oh, it appears as if I did. That is unfortunate. So it seems as though when you delete a building... You are just out there looking. Oh, because I didn't assign any planting. Well, I'll give you some work to do. Uh, hang on a moment. Do have anyone working there? Okay, you're working there, but... Hmm. We want more turnover, and I also want to see all of the different types of trees, so I'm going to plant some birch here. Good, get down from there and work. Uh, good. Oh, it's very aesthetically pleasing when it all comes together. I think that was the main draw of this. It takes forever, does it clear uh, the carrot field? Does it bottleneck our other fields? I don't know, I think that they're just being kind of lazy. We also don't have two assigned workers. We've been at kind of like half beaver capacity for the whole time. So I think we're uh, kind of making our way back up into the world. I'd like to make a large kind of apartment for them as we go. We just need to make sure that we don't expand our population too much. Uh, without being able to support it. So let's just go with more small water tanks for now. Mm, this looks fine to me. Actually, we'll just do this. Delete that. Yeah, we don't need one there either. We want to make sure that they don't deliver any of those resources to them before they cancel it. Because we'll just lose them. Okay, all of these facing each other. Maybe not quite perfect, but good enough. Good enough. Ah, uh, yes, another drought coming in 2.7 days. I don't know why, I, I look forward to them because it it's kind of like a test of all of my engineering and everything that I've done up till this point. Like if I'm like if I'm doing a good job, then I'll do well during the drought and I'll have I'll experience jubilation and validation. Yeah, I don't want to damn the well, if I don't what's gonna happen if I damn the uh, actually Well, here would be the advantage of damming the pond. If we dam this spot right here, we'll keep our crops safe for sure, but we might kill our drinking water. Because we go here for our drinking water, so we kind of need to make a decision here. But aren't we just, like, leaving stagnant water here forever? Let's go look at the water levels, because I think there's going to be a subtle difference. Hmm... While I do want to observe what will happen, I'm willing to damn it if it, you know, keeps us safe and alive because we do have a, quite a lot of essential crops over here. But again, it's a it's a great science experiment. 
Blocks water completely. I suppose you could just do that if you wanted to. Spill away at the top. Eh, I think this will just save us some trouble. Let's also go ahead and see if we can create some kind of path over it. Can we create a path over the dam itself? We can, in fact. They need, like, some sort of land bridge. Oh, nice. Or not really a land bridge. More of just a bridge bridge. Thirteen of them now. They've more than doubled in their population. That's nice. I like that. Still, do we need planks? We do not. We don't need planks. We're good. Work harder. Hmm. What are they doing? Why aren't they building? Ah, they're busy building this thing. Oh, good job, people. Get a long smile on your brother, everybody. Get a... Uh, job there we are you get down from there build something ah the plants are being planted man re english really has a lot of redundant words i'm going to go run on a run and plant some plants afterward i suppose you could pick other ones but oh, i've been streaming for a while haven't i damn costs a lot of wood that's true but also to dying and losing all of my beavers will cost a lot of lives which one will you pick? Instead of a dam, you could use a floodgate instead if you want to cycle through the water or release if it need be. I suppose that's fair, but we don't have enough money because we're stupid. What do we have? Yeah, triple floodgate, double floodgate, or regular floodgate. Yeah, I mean, well, not really money, just brain power. Well, here's what I kind of see is happening, is that... Eh, let's observe. Honestly, let's observe. I think the water will flow through here, but if after the flood, the water doesn't get into here, I would be more surprised because the flow should be strong enough that it gets through here and in. There's just something, I mean, I'll, I'll just kind of go into this, is that when I was looking into game dev stuff, because you can't help, I mean, if you if you play as many goddamn video games as I do, then you, you can't help but wonder about all of the things going into it. And any game with cellular automata or like fluid simulations like Noida or this, is just fascinating to behold. It's one of the reasons why Minecraft is so interesting and just like able to be ogled, you know? People will just stare at Minecraft videos for hours and hours on YouTube. And it's, it's an interesting rabbit hole to go down because it's actually like watching natural simulations, you know? We don't really get to see it in slow motion in nature, but it's nice when we see it happening with computer programming and video games. It's actually rather pleasant. The drought has started. Okay, do we have the... Uh, it is building... It is barely built. That was right on time. Okay, so let's see what happens. Um, what should happen is that the water flows out of the region. So I don't really know what happens right here. I think it just goes. Let's observe. Take science notes. Scientific notes. Is the water level lowering? We add it here. Now here, is it lowering? Okay, it has reached the bottom of my mouse cursor. So the water is flowing out very gradually. We are at the triple speed, so... Yeah, there it goes. So it's gone from here, but we also have a massive lake of water, a huge reservoir. But we've managed to dam it in here. My god, we're already down to all of the water from the top? Seems like we've used an impossible amount of water already. I'm quite surprised how quickly we used up all of that water. Now, this water is just lost and gone, which is sad. And again, we've got the... Ah, this, this is kind of nice to watch. Or a little sad, but also nice. There it goes. Now, at our home, we've uh, kept it safe because we've kept all the water in here. Now, what I think will happen is that the water will stay and then be used up only by our drinking supply so we're using up only what we're drinking right now this should continue to fuel our farms and lakes or uh i don't know planting grounds and whatnot and then this is our supply of drinking water so if this is enough to sustain our population we're okay this will never be used because it's in here because of a dam 
and that will keep our farms fueled. So we could release that later on if we wanted to. So I suppose a floodgate would work. Yeah, it's kind of like a tower defense against water physics. That's a good way to put it. But an interest way, interesting way to incorporate conflict into a game without necessarily putting violence into it. Not that that makes it a game worse in any way, but, you know, just a... I don't know, a mechanic that's interesting. Mm, unable to get all the required materials. This is because you need potatoes, and that's right, we don't have any potatoes. We have only seedlings right now, but this is enough to keep us alive. It's not really enough to expand, but... Well, that certainly feels pretty good right there. I don't know, should we, uh... Well, let's have a look at our beavers. 3.8 more days of drought. There is one other item I'd like to check if I can get. Triple Floodgate, Explosive Factory, Dynamite. Not really what I had in mind. There was one item that I had seen where you could actually observe the water levels. Here is a depth marker. Do we have enough science? We don't have enough science for this. We have only 110, but we've got one guy working on science. Think harder. Um, actually measures the depth of water, which is quite nice. Can't really see it right now, so we'll just kind of have to eyeball it. We don't have the research. Can I? There we are. Now let's just kind of make note of this. We've barely got like this full triangle showing. Won't be used up now, but we'll look at that maybe at the end of the drought and see if that's any lower. See what I mean? Right now they're just using up what they're drinking. I doubt that it's that much. Hmm. I suppose the main thing that I'm feeling is I don't really feel much threat. And now we've already got back up to 18 beavers, and there's no real end goal. I suppose that the thought is to just expand the map and build, like, a massive beaver city. Really, a beaveropolis. With hundreds and hundreds of them, maybe thousands, because they seem to be pretty low-maintenance people. Look, all they need is to sit around and talk to one another, and they've experienced jubilation from that. That's nice. We could do that. But how much water would that require? I think that this natural lake damming it would actually be a great reservoir for water. So I think that the best way to expand out would be just go to this way, because we already have a natural lake here. Toronto. Yeah, you could call it Toronto. Yeah, Beaver Beaverton. Is there a city named after beavers? Whatever it is, you're going to be sick and tired of them by the time we're done with this. Hmm. All right, let's take another look at this thing. Doesn't really appear as if it's dropped much, so the drinking water is fairly negligible. It doesn't seem like it's that dangerous, but the main conflict is to just expand. And of course, you have the motivation of getting more of them. Okay, now this is starting to bother me. Let's allow them to work in their old jobs again. Uh, this, however, has stopped working, too, because we have no water flow, so we could when the power is being weird or when the water is in a drought we could power these back up uh, some of these are getting kind of redundant though too so we'll just delete this one this one seems a bit red ah uh, that's actually a gatherer flag that's okay we can have that mm. Mm. this is a bit redundant we could get rid of that Ah, uh, sit here. Thanks very much for the sub. Mm, thoroughly enjoy doing things. Uh, make it th hey, Alama, Alamatata. Thanks very much for the uh, for the kind words. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I suppose that there is like uh, it does kind of quiet down after you. The nonetheless, it is very pleasing to make. I'm trying to think of other kind of fun contraptions I could do. Like, what other types of things I could make, or where would I go first from here? I suppose that the next main thing you would want to do would just be to construct wor uh, roads out to the sides. Let's see how far out this district can reach. Establish a structure with his own population resources, an isolated path network, employs builders, comfort, food, and sturdy wood. Folktales motto. Okay. Hmm. Build it along the wall, so we'll just have like a sketchy path along the wall over here. Not really sketchy, just a path. Don't question it, nothing to see here. Mm. Yeah, go along here over to the other side of the lake. The duck may swim on the lake, but my daddy owns the lake. 
There we go. Holes. Mm. All right, how far does that reach out? Okay, that's got a pretty decent radius on it, so we don't really need to build one of these things for a while. Try to think of where it would actually be an advantage to do so. We'd want to build one like way out here, but we can't even get them to build it out there. We could migrate our population as well. Hmm. Hmm. Amsterdam. Kind of like Amsterdam. Aren't the Dutch below sea level in a lot of their cities? They drive south on I-15. Uh, oh, there, so there is a city called just Beaver. That would be very confusing on a mailing address. Labor. Hauling post, builder's hut, distribution post, drop-off point. Metal decoration. Okay, it's ended. Ah, uh, let's experience the jubilation of water again. I feel like I've been using that word a lot. The triumph of water. Dun, 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 dun. Here it comes. Filling things up. It's a little bit surviving Mars. You know, that kind of terraforming mechanic? That, uh... That just generally satisfying feeling. How did our places do? Also, too, I just want to see how low it went. Okay, so we did actually start to see the lower wood panel. So we did use up a decent amount of wood there. Or was that a... Uh... Yeah, we did. We used up some of the water. But it should start to come through again. There it is now going through our, uh, our old area. Now there it goes. Wow, that's very nice. Ah, uh, here comes the water. Ah, that's nice. I don't know, to me, the, I think that that's the core mechanic that's the most interesting in this game. You may care to... You may beg to differ. Ah, uh, yes, and we've unlocked Iron Teeth. They're happier than ever. I guess because we got the water back or something. Oh no, they got grilled potatoes. Oh, good for them. Something outstandingly cozy about that. Hmm... I'm trying to think of how I would divert water up higher. I think the main thing that we would need is a lot of science, and we would need to get further in that regard. So now we're back up to 22 beavers. Let's go ahead and build more science. Inventors. I think our best way of doing this right now is to just make more huts for them to work in. Hey, Zane Faith. Hey, thanks for the 15 months. Wow, I can't believe we've been streaming that long. Thank you very much. Have I played Dwarf Romantic? Or Dwarf Romantic? I feel like it'd be perfect for this kind of thing. Uh, actually, yeah, we did check out Dwarf Romantic. I think they came out with a recent expansion for that. Or they, uh, not an expansion, an update. Fairly different things, I suppose. We'll be glad to come back into that. You know, it's like, uh, it's a nice way to mix things up to just do a puzzle game like this. Not really puzzle, it's kind of like puzzle colony builder. And yet it, it, you know, it merits more than one playthrough. Hmm. To me, an interesting challenge for this would be, like, a very difficult map to play on, you know what I mean? Like, uh, start somewhere where you're really in trouble in terms of water. I think we could... Nah, actually, there's not much reason to go here. I want to create some massive flood. And flood like an entire plane. But I think we'll need explosives to divert the river. So, let's see what we're going to need to do to do that. Dynamite destroys the block terrain underneath and triggers adjacent dynamites. Ground only must be built on the ground. Explosives factory manufactures explosives from paper. So pretty much the goal of the game if you want to expand is to blow up the ground. You know, start from your solid colony core. Maybe build vertically more houses. Get more beavers to happen. And then have them all research science. Essentially what we're trying to do with humanity right now by going to Mars. Hmm. Oh, this is a nice way to look at your beavers progress like that. We are going to need to build more housing soon, otherwise we're going to have a housing crisis. I feel like a lot of that stuff is quite a bit further along, though, in the game. And there's not really much of a threat. There's not much urgency. How about starting close to the water source so you lose water quickly? 
Oh, like so that we would well, we could just dam it at the front. Like if we started off at the front of the lake, back over here. You could do that. I feel like it would be much more intuitive to divert the water. Like one thing that I could easily see happening on this map is, I mean, this is like an infinite water spawner. So one thing that you could do would be to just blow up this and then you fill the entire, this entire side of the map with water. Another thing that I haven't really seen yet and we could try to employ right now. We need only 120 this blocks water completely. Hmm. I feel as though I don't have time to get through all of the game's mechanics appreciably in this amount of time. So what I could end up doing is just try to totally block the water. And do something that I thought would happen with this first dam. I think I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to research levees. Let me just see. Am I totally sure about this? Double floodgate, triple floodgate. I think we're a little ways away from this and I think it's going to take longer to do. So I'm going to make a kind of a kind of a mistake right here cuz I'm just genuinely curious what's going to happen. We'll build le uh, what is it? Fairly, yeah, that's a fairly narrow point. We'll build levees across here. Mm, we need paths there. Uh We can't go through bushes? Can we destroy bushes? And priorities, cut trees, plant crops. Are we, are we allowed to just destroy the bush? Do we need dynamite to destroy it? <laughs> build them on top of the water. Well, if we can't get that, then we'll just build it somewhere else, and that's also fine. Hmm. An option on the left. High description. Hmm. We know about the iron teeth. Nothing to do in range. Let's get rid of that now, then. Mm. The house with the hammer. House with the hammer. Oh, that thing. Okay, so we could demolish this. Okay, so let's destroy these bushes, because we don't really need too much of this anymore. Like buildings uh, mark resources for demolition, so that... I don't want... It seems a bit aggressive to demolish a bush. Like the utter savagery. What are they doing here? You lied all along, you liars. You could get to the levee. I am going to kill these bushes for no reason. Well, whatever. So be it. It's too far. No, it's fine. All right, well, they'll build the levee. Now, what I'm kind of curious is this going to happen. Will the water just rise up? It does kind of make sense. You know, you have a lot of, like, dam talk and stuff like that. But it kind of brings me back to Hurricane uh, Katrina and Sandy when they were talking about all this stuff in the news. And we all suddenly like got a degree in civil engineering because we were all saying, well, the levees didn't hold and why didn't the levees hold and this and that. And, you know, they should have just gotten out of that city. But at least they got the Saints. They're doing pretty well, right? I mean, you know, they've had Drew Brees for so many years. Yeah, they'll be fine. Is, is anybody from is anybody from New Orleans? Actually, I want to make a trip over there. Mm, let me going to starve my farms of water. Probably, we'll just delete some of it. I I want to observe what it's going to do though. Well, actually, I don't think it's going to starve the farms of water because think about it. When you block off water, the water doesn't just stop coming. The water actually rises up. So what I think is going to happen is that it'll flood this area over here. But I want to learn through observation. Hmm. Hmm. You worked with the guy who did the levees? Jesus. Hmm. A moment. A penny for your thoughts. One second. Sarah, I'm getting a notification. Oh, there's free DoorDash. I mean, well, 50% off. That's, you know. I've got only about 50% of my life left to live, so that's basically free, right? Yeah. Ah. Hmm. I'll say that it's a bit of a slow gameplay loop, but I feel like maybe that's because I've gone for longer term stuff. Maybe it's because I've gone for, uh, what is it? Are you, see, like, what are you doing? It's watered and alive. Why aren't, like, why aren't you cutting this tree down? Do we have the, we don't even have the complete capacity. You're just sitting there and there's trees to be cut down, you slob. Watered and alive. 
Or do maples have a longer lifespan? Let's go ahead and take a look at that again. Uh, yeah, that's eight. Eight logs. Oh, it's because I never designated them. So there are a couple of steps. Okay, I... There we are. It's good. You know, through, like... Through a dialogue of... Ah, here we go. Oh, I missed it, but... The idea holds... Wow, we still haven't even completely finished off this levee. My god, you're going to walk into the water? You absolute chad. Ah, oh, look at that. He's practically Beaver Jesus. Beezus. Just one snap off from Kanye. Any plans of ever trying Songs of Six? Songs of Six I was actually just playing about a half hour ago, trying to... Or a half hour before I started the stream. It's going to take a bit longer to learn. But a, an excellent game indeed. I should check my email from... I have something interesting to propose. Hey. Oh, wait, is that one scene of... Oh, God bless. Hmm. Actually... Oh, wait a second. Yeah, we were chatting. Yeah, hey, no, it's just taking me a little bit longer to get on it. But God bless you guys. I, I saw one of your guys' update videos. Thanks for all of the hard work and just, I don't know, genuinely, genuinely being a nice person. Be interesting, Mark. Uh, here's 50% coupon for your midlife crisis. Well, we'll see about that. But look at this beaver. Look at this levy coming in. Oh, wowzers. Here it goes. I want to see what's going to happen when I completely flood this. I doubt much will change because I think it's just going to simply flood over. But we might also have something entirely unexpected, too. Six out of twelve. It should be only... Only about 12 more hours before that's done. I'd like to see if I can potentially destroy my own entire colony. What a fantastic, horrible ending that would be. Can we build a levee on top of a levee? Hmm. They can swim. Yeah, of course they can swim, probably. Except they can't breathe underwater. Hmm, 10 of 12. There we go. Oh, wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Didn't expect that. Oh, my God. It's awful and terrifying. Look, here comes the water. Ah, yes. Ah. Oh, we don't even have an insurance company yet. I guess that's the next thing to think about. It's flooded. Okay, so when we flood things, then they just don't work anymore. I imagine if we get water on top of our buildings, that wouldn't be too good either. But it's interesting and fun. So now the water is slowly drifting into our lands. <laughs> ah, that's exciting. But, like, that's the marvelous, I don't know, the... Like, the system at play underneath this. Hmm. I like that. I don't know, I'll, I'll debuild these levees. Now can we destroy them pretty quickly, or are we, uh... Are we completely screwed? Oh, good. Okay, so then the river does come back down, so it's fairly easy to fix my intentional mistake. But we could divert water and, you know, path it around differently. I just wanted to do that as a test. It's interesting, though, that you don't actually need a beaver there to destroy the, uh, the path. Ah, and the water does need to be higher up to allow the, gran the ground to be grass. Look at that. That ground just had a little existential crisis there. It was like, am I grass or am I not? Gives them something to do, something to break up the monotony. Mm. Yeah. You know, it, it does feel a little bit like there's one thing that's going on. But I, I think that it's doing that building right. Well, it's interesting. It's really pretty. I, I can't hit home on that enough, just how pretty this game is. Huh. I don't know. I feel like I feel like I've done quite a lot though. I feel like I've gotten some stuff done and I feel gratification 